Okay, here's a fun one. A customer was in not too long ago for oil change and checking for service. Nothing major was found. Sent him on his way. Of course, now he phones. Car broke down while driving. Won't start again. Quickest thing to do on any of these older fuel injected vehicles for a no start is to check the coil. Just plug in a good used coil and uh, disconnect the hall sensor from the distributor. Disconnect the ignition coil wire from the distributor and have it close to an engine ground and then briefly touch the center wire of the harness plug. Each time you touch it, you should get a spark with the key on. Here the injector is clicking as well. And you obviously want to make sure that when the key is on, that one of the outer two pins has power, which this one does. So one is power, the other one is ground, so you touch it to battery positive, the other side is ground, and then the middle one is a trigger. And the trigger is from the computer, the engine computer, so every time it grounds the center pin, you get a spark. So it, with the hall sensor connected and you're cranking and you're not and you're not getting any spark here, do the test at the harness plug. If you get spark then you know your hall sensor is no good. So this one needs a hall sensor. And there's no way of us knowing during our oil change and checking over for service that it was gonna go. So what can we do, right? And no, this is not the one that I did the purchase inspection on. those bolts out if, if you see a crease here and here then the whole thing comes out just lift up here like that there's a cover on the distributor cap you just pull it straight off disconnect the hall sensor Disconnect the distributor cap. There's one more on the other side. Just got to feel for it blindly. Swing the cap out of the way. Remove the rotor. Also leave it in place, doesn't matter if you're removing the cap, okay, if you're removing the whole distributor. And one thing you would want to do is make sure that the rotor turns, so we'll have somebody crank the engine. So all I'm going to do is put a black mark here, and quickly crank it. You can see it moved, so I know the crank the camshaft is rotating the distributor. Make a mark to identify distributor location. And that's just for preliminary uh, alignment. the 
look for it. Oh, it is top. Just wiggle the distributor out. Sometimes you have to use a screwdriver for added, added leverage. And the O-ring can get quite stuck in there. Just work it back and forth. It's coming. You do have to be careful because this is a plastic alignment pin here. This is what orientates the distributor for number one reference, basically. So people were inquiring about using a stubby hall sensor. You can see this hall sensor is a long one where the hall sensor is on the opposite side of the connector. You can get hall sensors where this magnetic pickup is over here. Now you can see where the rotor is pointing, let's say for um, sake of argument that this is number one, you have a closed window here and you have an open window here, see the open window? So if you install a stubby hall sensor and this is line to number one, you're getting the wrong signal. When it should be an open, it's a closed, uh, in which case you would have to rotate the distributor to a point where it's open and it's closed here and whether or not the alignment slots will allow you to do that that's the big question it might very well but uh, it's best if you get a hall sensor that's the same size Super careful when you knock this guy out, the roll pin. it's starting to move okay and make sure that you keep the orientation the same. So here's the cutout, and that's where this guy is. So if you put this on backwards, your timing's gonna be out. Don't lose any of these washers. You have to go back in the same direction. 
there's a little washer on the inner inside or under the shaft. Uh, that one just broke. It's a little felt washer. Gonna have to find another one of these. bolts for the hall sensor. And the sensor just wiggles out, and that's where you're replacing. <coughs> Here's the new one. Comes with instructions. Push it down into place. Don't have to go nuts with these screws. Just tight, snug. You can see I have a new washer here, a replacement one. I'm just going to put a little bit of oil here. Come on. much these are the ones that go on the bottom <coughs> okay, and 
now we look for the opening here. There's the opening, so that's where that pin is going to be. Okay. And when you install the uh, roll pin, when you install the roll pin, you want to use a punch that's slightly bigger. get it started you can hit right on the roll pin right on the roll pin itself nice to have a gully Let's see those guys with abs do this. Anyway, just go to flush. And use a smaller punch to go a little bit further. Okay, that's it. Make sure it turns nicely. And back in she goes. I guess I guess correctly. It's working. And the radiator fans are always on high speed, even with the key just on. When disconnecting the AC cutout switch, the thermo switch, or at least I think that's what it's called, the fans do not come on. So I believe this temperature sensor is shorted. Uh, we're just going to leave it disconnected for now so that the uh, fans don't uh, burn out from being on all the time. And we'll let the customer know whether or not, or I'll ask him whether or not he wants the sensor replaced. It's going to warm it up and then check timing afterwards.